Okay, I want to go over a couple of comments here. First, let me read one from William Latham. He says, I had heard that Jesus comes after the tribulation and the people who survive would have children. And those that are born during the thousand years would have to choose to accept Jesus or reject him. And I imagine that even when he reigns here, where people can see him, that there would be some who would want, who would not want him, but would accept Satan when he got loosed. I used to think that could be true, but I did not really understand it. But now, after watching your videos the past year or so, Jim, you've helped make it so simple to understand and see how crazy some of these things sound that I used to believe. Thank you for all you do. Now, I really appreciate that. I greatly appreciate that, William, because I'm telling you, if, for me, it feels like nobody is seeing it. And it's absolutely true that we are in this thousand year period when uh, that's spoken of in Revelation 20. And yet the idea that there's a thousand year period coming after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven is absolutely wicked, pure wickedness, equally as wicked as the theory of evolution that suggests we are created in the image of a monkey. All right, so I appreciate that. I really do. Uh, uh, sometimes I feel like I'm all alone here, and uh, it's nice to s know that people are getting it because it's so simple. And I think I, I really do think that the reason people are buying in to this idea of a thousand year period coming after the end of the world. I think they're buying into that because they lack faith. And you know, we read about how uh, in the Old Testament that God will allow them to choose their delusions. I also will choose their delusions and delusions because they do not have faith. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called none did answer when I spake they did not hear but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not obviously these people do not have faith because they do not have faith they have delusions and that's what this is this idea of Jesus reigning a thousand years after the end of the world it's delusional all right so I want to touch on a couple uh, one or two things here um, so I guess the one thing would be you, you know this idea of them you know, when after the end of the world, people choosing to, you know, believe in Jesus or to believe in Satan. And you think about that scenario and then consider this. That, uh, what is that? Luke 17 or something? I don't remember. Here, let me find it. Luke 16 Luke 16 okay um, the story of uh, Lazarus I believe if I'm remembering this correctly uh, you know what yeah though no, it's there I just gotta keep reading gotta be patient right in your patience possess See, I gotta be patient, right? Gotta be patient. In your patience possess ye your souls, right? So I gotta be patient here, and it's right here. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid out at the gate full of sores. So I'm sure you're familiar with this. And at the end of it, you see that uh, it doesn't, you know, this rich man was 
asking Mo or Abraham to, you know, go, hey, my brothers are still alive in the earth. Go tell them so that they don't suffer the same consequences that I suffer. Being in hell, being in torments, right? Go tell them. And Abraham says, look, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he says, no, 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 no. Abraham, if, but if one of went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, or said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Now think about at the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are changed in the twinkling of an eye. First the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them to meet the Lord in the air. We are risen from the dead. And now the scenario that these delusional people teach, which I call the zombie doctrines, is that we're, we're risen from the dead and then placed back down on earth with unsaved people. Think about that scenario. We are going to be transformed into our glorified, incorruptible bodies, living among people who are not saved, who do not have eternal life, who do not have incorruptible bodies, after we have risen from the dead. And he, th I mean, this would be a big problem if that were true, this verse here. Because now you've created a scenario that, bef that fits what this rich man is calling for. He's calling to Abraham and saying, hey, if one rose from the dead, they will repent. And so the zombie doctrines are, are teaching that, hey, this is going to happen. Abraham was overruled. And therefore, when he says, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead, Abraham is wrong. I mean, think about that. It just, no matter how you look at this, it's just absolutely crazy that people would suggest there's a thousand year period. Now, look, I think I heard the other day that there's a new Hollywood movie coming out, Left Behind, creating and, and promoting that same scenario. It, it, it's it's absolutely insane. Well, so I don't want to get out into all that left behind because I've not seen the movie. But the idea that there are unsaved people living after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it, it's, it's insane. It's wicked. Pure wickedness. Because at the end of the world, after we arose from the dead, there is no more opportunity to be saved. Your opportunity is today. And I, what, don't put it off any longer. And don't tell anybody else to, they can put it off any longer because they can't. All right. So I appreciate that, William. And then um, truth sets you free. Good story. God forgives us. Yeah. So if you don't forgive those who sin against you, why would God forgive you for the sins against him? So it's very important that we forgive and that we love one another. Roderick says, Much love, Jimmy. Peace be unto you. I've witnessed you being persecuted for the gospel of Jesus and want to encourage you to continue standing firmly on the rock, though it may sadden you at times. It's all joy. Yeah, appreciate that. Joshua James, the Most High God of Righteousness, the author of our moral compass, will always forgive a true heart of humbled repentance that doesn't mean there won't be repercussions for one's actions so that's true even though we are forgiven even though that we're not bound to sin we still live in this world of sin and we live in this flesh of sin this wretched flesh and we will have desires 
of a sinful nature and if we act upon those desires there I mean even just in our heart there's repercussions right there's consequences um, that doesn't mean we stopped with, just because we sin against God for example doesn't mean we're not we're still that we're not still children of God or that we're not saved anymore because uh, a great example I've heard numerous times is if your son does something he's not supposed to he's still your son right so you want to correct him and so also our father in heaven wants to correct us when we make mistakes all right when we do things we shouldn't so forgiving someone who has sinned against you or a loved one is a very difficult thing to do it is because we get so riled up we feel like a victim right we like this guy did me wrong i'm never gonna forgive him you know just we get angry but after the anger is gone i th we ought to come to the conclusion that we got to forgive him because this is tormenting us as long as we do not forgive them it torments us so we think about the wrong that we've been uh, that's been handed to us if you will uh, the torment shouldn't be on us it should be on them and it is on them but we got to forgive them for our own sake for peace within ourselves and that's exactly why Jesus teaches us to forgive and to love one another so that we have peace um, so if there's no peace let it be on them that do wrong upon us let there be peace and therefore let us love one another even them that hate us and persecute us right especially the sin of murder I would imagine yeah especially I would imagine uh, the it's very hard especially early on to forgive somebody that murders your child especially right but it is most certainly the right thing to do harboring hatred and carrying anger instead of learning to forgive and let go is a burden and a weight carrying on the vessel holding the grudge that's true not only will this negatively impact the one refusing to forgive it is constant dagger in the heart of a humbled sinner who is truly sorry I have family that refuse to forgive me for my actions as a drug addict. It pains me very deeply to know that they refuse to forgive me. I am very thankful for God's grace and the undeserved forgiveness He has granted me. Without mercy, I wouldn't be able to live with myself today. Blessings. So that's a great comment right there. Um, there's one verse I want to point to. Um, here, learn I think it says learn what this means but go ye and learn what this means I will have mercy and not sacrifice I'm come not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance if you think you're righteous you're not all right but if you know that you're a sinner then you'll hear Jesus calling upon you to turn to him he is a, your savior he is a savior he will save you all right and again in Hosea the Old Testament for I desired mercy not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings we're not saved by our righteousness we are saved by his righteousness um, we are not saved by our works but the works that he has done the works of God that we ought to do is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me do it this way. Because I don't remember nothing, I have to remember small phrases, right? John chapter 6, verse 28, And then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Question. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. So, great comment there by Joshua James. Appreciate that. Uh, I, under, I, can, uh, I can relate. Absolutely. Dan Las... Dan Las... I think that's Dan La Music. I think that's Latin, probably French. Dan 
Dan's music, essentially. Uh, Jimmy, long time sub here since about 2011, 2012, before Flatter 2013. Yeah, that's right. So I mean, that's interesting because I think it was about 2011 when I first made my, my first video, and I just wanted to see if I could do it, you know, and it, uh, I could tell the whole story, but I'll keep it short. Um, back then, I just wanted to, I wanted to be able to make videos and preach, and of course, I was limited by my fears, really, if I'm being honest, but I felt a, an, a necessity, like, that I had to do this, especially in 2012, when I realized, but after great study, and I studied day to night, day after day, and I had to know what you know what is going on here in regards to the earth and how it relates to the Bible, how it relates to the theory of evolution and everything, and how it relates to astronauts and all that sort of stuff. I had to know the truth. I just wanted to know the truth, and then when I discovered the truth, it's like, whoa, I have to share this. And it took a while before people caught on, but they eventually did. I'm glad they did. And I didn't want to, I didn't really never wanted to head this thing or lead this thing. And so I'm thankful for the guys that came along and shared the truth. And no matter how screwed up they got it, they still got enough information out there where. Uh, people are thinking about it and talking about it and so on and so forth. So I appreciate that. Very interesting time for certainly 10 years ago. I mean, if you wanted 10 years ago to learn about conspiracies, what, you know, the conspiracies of JFK and uh, people on going to the moon and all that sort of stuff, you could easily find it. Of course, you would be flooded with other stuff like uh, the lizard stuff, you know, People claiming there are lizard people and all that sort of... You got all the weird stuff back then. Nowadays, you can't find it. It's impossible to find any of these sorts of conspiracies that are true and untrue. Uh, you just... Uh, YouTube controls it all in a very negative way, in my opinion. Now, it's, uh, it's, it's, an, it's incredible. It really is. Uh, so, anyways, I'm, I'm just rambling. Okay, so uh, back then, it isn't it that Jesus only died for the elect, and that the lost are those whom he died, and who are given to believe because they were died for. If Jesus died for every individual, what some of those end up being destroyed, then doesn't that make the blood of Jesus or the blood of Christ of no effect, since it didn't actually cover them? And then my comment was, yeah, great question. I want to do a video on this, but let me say now that Jesus died for everyone. Everyone is a sinner. There is none that have no sin. Now, we are at the mercy of God. The law of Moses shows us that, in a sense, that there is no way we can be sinless ourselves. We need a Savior. So the law of Moses is there to bring us to faith in Christ. right? Because the law shows us obviously in my opinion that we're not perfect we can't live up to the law and then here comes jesus he, now he's going to show us that hey not only are you not able to live up the, to the law but you're not up, able to live up to my righteousness because it's not just breaking the law it's what's in your heart right and jesus takes the law and goes up one step because it, it takes it to another level, makes it even harder. You know, if we can understand what he's teaching, then we ought to understand it's it's impossible for us to be perfect. If the only way for us to be perfect is to have faith in the one who is perfect, and that is Jesus Christ, the righteous. The good news is that we have a Savior. It's Jesus Christ. The righteous. Okay, so if we believe in him, he has promised to come in unto us and save us, and our sins are forgiven. They are covered by the blood of Jesus. All right, so Jesus died for the sinner that we might be saved. 
We that are saved are the elect. So them that do not believe, they are not saved, because they do not believe in the, the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? The one whom the Father has sent. They do not believe. And therefore, they condemn themselves. In fact, I mean, Jesus doesn't condemn them that are unsaved. The unsaved condemn themselves because they do not believe. They are not born of God. And they will die in their sins because they have not believed. Salvation is by grace through faith. It's always been about faith. I want to do a video sharing the verses that will hopefully make this easy to understand things. All right, so, um, yeah, yeah, you know what? Um, uh, so the question is, um, okay, so the question is, um, did Jesus die in vain if not everybody gets saved? Okay. Uh, his so he died for the sins not just for ours only but for the sins of the whole world so I think I explained that already so but let me just share one verse if I can um, John 3 verse 18 he that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Um, so I, I think that um, is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. If you believe not, you're condemned already. And oh, what would that verse be that uh, um, that Jesus says, I come not to judge goodness sakes um, I apologize no no that's it would be in the in the first four books what am I thinking of here Jesus says for judgment I am come into this world that they which see not might see and that they which see might be made blind okay so, uh, in other words, um, you're, we're all blind until we have faith. And when we have faith, our eyes are opened. Okay. And so those of us that think they see, they don't see at all. And those of us which are blind are can now see because we have faith. All right. All right. So... I'm not sure I'm going to be able to find a verse that is in my head at the current moment. But anyways, that one verse I shared in John 3. John 3 is such a great chapter. It's amazing. All right, and what do we got? 156 examples. Okay, so I'm just going to waste a bunch of time looking for one verse that basically supports what I just shared. And that that is that um, Jesus has come not to condemn us, but to give us eternal life, to offer us eternal life if we believe in him. All right. So if you can recall the verse that I'm thinking of, that uh, supports that. Um then share it in the comments will you because I don't I'm drawing a blank I've had too much coffee this morning I've got I've got to run anyways and so on I'm trying to find a verse that uh, so anyways the point is here that uh, Jesus has not come to condemn us but to offer us eternal life okay and um, so if you if you're still confused Dan uh, let's continue this conversation and I'll focus solely on that idea all right that G you know, look Jesus did, isn't going to fail anybody anybody that wants to believe will be saved or wants to ha have everlasting life that wants to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ um, he's promised that he will save them now 
the people that aren't saved, they don't want to believe. They don't believe, they don't think they need a savior when they absolutely do. We all need a savior. And this is condemnation that uh, here let me find a verse cuz I'll butcher I butcher every verse in the Bible. Let's do it this way. Oh, it's the next verse. Hey, John 3, I'm telling you, it's an amazing chapter. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, that men love darkness rather than the light, because their, e because their deeds are evil. Were evil, okay? Oh, man. Boy, if I would have just opened up John 3, I would have saved 20 minutes of video right here. For God sent not a son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. What's the verse before that? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Once saved, always saved. Eternal life, eternal security. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is condemnation that light is come into the world and men loved darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. All right, so it, uh, clearly, um, you know, men prefer darkness. It's unfortunate. It, I really, I consider that I was in that place that, I mean, I was dark when I was a young man. I was in a very dark place and I realized I needed change. I really did. And so I thought if I moved away to a different place, it, it, I would change. But when I moved to another place and I realized all the, the people around me are all the same, I really, I realized that it's not the things around me that I need to change but rather what needed to be changed was what was in me and so that's when I started to really ponder really reflect and think about things and come I finally came to the realization that I need a savior the only way for me to change what's in me is to believe in the savior that is the Lord Jesus Christ only he's the only one that can change me and so uh, it's not the world around me that's changed but it's the way I view the world that gives me peace and understanding uh, that is around me right and so now there is peace in my heart that was not there before and that all stems from faith and it's always been about faith and I think so many people lose focus of this or they don't understand it and it's so so very important Hebrews 11 verse 7 by faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet moved with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith so again it's about faith it's always been about faith and I appreciate that Dan if I if I'm not uh, being very clear simple and easy to understand let me know and I will focus more on this let's continue this conversation if need be. Richie Jacobs, I guess he thinks God wrote the Bible so he can show us what we're missing. Yeah, unfortunately, um, you know, that's a lot of people out there that are telling you, you can't trust the Bible. You got to go to foreign languages, which you have absolutely no understanding. And then, of course, you got screwballs like this that say, hey, everything in the Bible's already happened. You, there's no reason to read it, no reason to believe anything. Just, you know, if you want any sort of guidance, just listen to me. You know, basically, that's what they're saying. That uh, Jesus Christ has already risen from the dead, and he's already returned, and all the elect are risen from the graves, and they are transformed and changed in the twinkling of an eye. It's all happened. Everything in Revelation has happened, and 
the holy city of God has already come down and and it just uh, you don't need to know anything more than that all right just listen to me and it's already happened I mean just complete nutbags right as they're saying you don't even try to understand the Bible don't even have faith in anything you're gonna live and you're gonna die and that's it all that stuff that's in the Bible it already happened just no, absolutely no reason at all to have put any faith in the Word of God because everything's already happened it's already gone it's too late for you the resurrection has already passed all right. and to me that's that's wicked for sure but I really do believe that this idea of a thousand year reign happening at after the end of the world is far more wicked it's far more corrupt okay you got the futurist and you got the preterist and it's all wicked but every bit as wicked is this idea that a thousand years of Jesus reigning or you reigning uh, that happens at after the end of the world it's insane it's crazy and uh, well I don't want to go any more into that I think I've gone on long enough all right any questions if I'm being too hard on these guys or anything at all let me know okay appreciate it have a good day